thumbs up to the crowd. The introduction of Boomer Esiason, his last the starting assignment here was almost five years ago to the day. It is Jacksonville at Cincinnati. And by the way, just as a sidebar, Pittsburgh is losing. And if Jacksonville goes uh, to a victory today, then they will take over sole possession. But that's getting ahead of ourselves. I'm Charlie Jones with Bob Trumpy. What do you expect from Boomer Esiason? Well, I think uh, Bruce Cousin wants Boomer Esiason to do a couple of things. One, lead this football team. Be tough on the players out there that are on the field with him. You can see his career numbers for Cincinnati. They booed him off the field in 1992. But, Charlie, you know, as a backup, you're always the guy that can get the job done. So, uh, Boomer Esiason starts for Jeff Blake, and we'll see if, in fact, Boomer can get the job done. All right, now the man who gets the job done for Jacksonville, of course, is their quarterback. Yeah, and he has been just fantastic. I, I think Mark Brunell is emerging as one of the great quarterbacks in the league. Even with the knee injury, he continues to compete. He is the leader of the Jacksonville Jaguars, and he is a solid performer every single week. What about Tony Baselli? Well, he's activated, but he warmed up. You can see he's limping badly on his right ankle. He's active. I don't think he can play. All right, stay with us. We'll be back with the kickoff in just a moment. But right now, let's go to New York City. Hi, everyone. Let's quickly update you on the scores of the early games today, starting with a wild game in Foxborough just winding down. The Patriots with a three-point lead on the Dolphins, just seconds to play, and the Dolphins trying to recover an onside kick in the final seconds of regulation time. Dan Marino was intercepted for the third time today here by Larry Wiggum, who had two of those picks. This ended Miami's bid to cut the Patriots' lead to three points. It cost them a field goal at the time. That field goal might cost them dearly if they don't convert in the final seconds here, but it's 27-24 at Foxborough, New England, in the lead. At Green Bay, the Packers blew open a tight game in the fourth quarter, beating the Cowboys 45-17. to The Packers now in control in the NFC Central. The New York Jets stalled a bid for a tie at the end of the game by the Vikings and beat Minnesota 23-21. A touchdown in the final minute into the game and then the Vikings needed a two-point conversion but Robert Smith is stopped by Rick Lyle of the Jets the Jets move to eight and four on the year 23 21 is the final score the Chicago Bears over the Tampa Bay Bucks today 13 to 7 at Soldier Field in Philadelphia the Steelers trailing the Eagles 23 to 13 late in the fourth in Tennessee the Oilers 31 14 over the Buffalo Bills in Detroit big day for Barry Sanders 216 yards 32 10 the Lions a winner Ball Baltimore losing to Arizona 13 to 10 and Atlanta beat the New Orleans Saints. We'll send you to the kickoff in San Francisco, Seattle or Cincy right after this. It is sunny, but it is cold and the temperature is going to drop this afternoon. The strength of Boomer Esiason, you touched on it, and we'll see him in just a moment as Cincinnati won the toss they will be receiving. Well, with all the years that Boomer has been a quarterback in the NFL, one of his strengths is inspiring other players around him to be just a little bit better. That's a nice way of putting <laughs> yes. he will climb your shorts, in your shorts, <laughs> if you don't do what's said. Here, too, 63 on the back of his helmet. That is in tribute to a... Uh, a longtime teammate, Joe Walter, who was unceremoniously waived from this football team. And that is a classic picture of who and what Boomer Esiason is. Also, those numbers are interesting. A juxtaposition of his age. He's 36. You would bring it up already, <laughs> yeah. Charlie. And he's out there with some kids, but. Uh... In fact, he has an offensive lineman, Willie Anderson, who was in high school when he was in his A day. And he points it out to him quite often. All right, here we go. Mike Hollins is going to kick it away for Jacksonville. Their record is eight and three. David Dunn on the return out to the 20, the 25. Good return, boy. To the 37-yard line. And here comes Boomer Esiason, the offense of Cincinnati. Now all he has to do is deliver. The fans have been screaming for this for weeks, Charlie. Now the hard part. Now the hard part. Jacksonville is not here to cooperate. Will he come out throwing? 
I think you're going to see Cincinnati run more than throw today. Boy, Dylan, the remaining back. Dylan, the ball carrier. He's got nothing there. Kevin Hardy with the tackle. Let's take a look at that offensive line of Cincinnati. Well, this over the last several years has been the problem for Cincinnati. Just uh, guys in and out, shuffled everywhere, have not really protected the quarterback very well, or opened many holes for the running backs. Backs and receivers. And Corey Dillon, the young guy getting the start, and he is a big, tough runner. Boomer drops it off underneath the coverage. Pass is complete to Brian Mill, the fullback. Has the first down as he goes out to the 48 yard line. We want to welcome those watching the Miami New England game. We'll bring you up to date. Boomer Esiason starting at quarterback. He goes to Carl Pickens, Dave Thomas. Was there for Jacksonville, New England defeating Miami by a score of 27 to 24. So New England making a comeback after that debacle at Tampa Bay last week. Well, they got absolutely killed. In oh, Tampa. they did. They did. And Boomer Esiason has the Cincinnati Bengals on the march. This is the opening drive of the ball game. Corey Dillon gets a call, and Kevin Hardy again with the tackle. And let's check out. That defense for the Jacksonville Jaguars. Uh, one of the players missing too for the Jacksonville Jaguars on defense. It remains Brackens, the two rookie defensive tackles have played relatively well for Tom Coughlin. And the uh, linebackers and defensive backs, an excellent group for the Jacksonville Jaguars. Figures probably the best coverage guy for Jacksonville. First down, Cincinnati. Assigns in the throw on first down. He goes deep to the far side and it is caught. It's a first down. Pickens again. Dave Thomas had the coverage. Well, so far, Boomer Esiason has been perfect. Good play action fake. He waits on Carl Pickens. Thomas is on the inside, kind of gives him the outside. The ball doesn't get there with great authority, but that's three for three now for Boomer Esiason. 12 yards and the first down. Dylan the right side and he is stopped. So thus far the running attack has been pretty well shut down but they have yet to stop the arm of Boomer Esiason Eddie Robinson for the Jaguars. Yeah and actually when I talked to Tom Coughlin before the ball game his greatest concern was I'm not sure what we'll get from Cincinnati. You know we don't know if we're going to if uh, Cincinnati is going to get an emotional lift from Boomer Esiason. Uh, he has great confidence in his football team but sometimes a quarterback can in fact do that for his team. Three wide receivers. Second down and ten. Esiason, three-step drop, sets fires. Four for four. Tony McGee, the tight end. Schwartz makes the stop. Nothing big, nothing fancy. Short drops, short patterns. Good protection. There is motion. You're going to throw it to the tight end right here, Tony McGee. Again, great patience. And as long as you can keep the defensive line on the line of scrimmage, and the receiver should be able to find that soft spot in the zone between linebacker and safety. Third down three. Esiason again, three step drop. A delayed quarterback draw and the slide. That's now that was not designed, everybody was covered. Yeah, that's a scramble. Yes. And again, another way that Boomer just gives a message to the players around him. If you think I'm going to go stand out here and act like I'm 36, it's not going to happen. The motion draws the linebacker out, and that allows the middle to open slightly for Boomer to take the yardage that's there. Boomer, four for four, 40 yards in the opening drive. Dillon in motion. Here is Dillon sliding down the line. And again, the running attack yielding only a yard or two, maybe a yard at most. To the 14 yard line. Brian Schwartz with the stop. It'll be second down and nine. If there is a positive for the Cincinnati offense in this 1997 season, even at three and eight, when they get inside the 20, they are very good. You can see that percentage of touchdown leads only 21 times there. Only New Orleans has been there less. Carl Pickens. Davis saves the score. 
very very quick throw by Boomer just like a step and a half drop. You know normally you have a three step drop. There's no coverage on Pickens and Boomer recognizes it. Someone just blew the coverage they weren't deployed yet and the Bengals take advantage of it. First down goal to go. Dylan leans. He's not going to get in. He may get to the one yard line. It'll be second down and goal to go. Ryan Schwartz and company leaning against him. This again the opening drive of the ball game. And Charlie that's why this game is so darn difficult to figure out. I mean you know you have a quarterback who hasn't started in five years for this team. Uh, he comes in and ignites everybody. Are they going to quick snap him here? Boomer rolling a little pump fake. Comes back inside incomplete. He was out of time had to throw back in the coverage. He was going to Tony McGee. Eddie Robinson had the coverage. Uh, It'll be third down goal to go. Jacksonville was late getting people off of the field. They try a little half roll here trying to create a crowd. Just get somebody picked off. Cincinnati Cincinnati's record is three and eight. Are they in four down territory here? Oh, absolutely. <clears throat> sure. Absolutely. <clears throat> and that's another thing that Tom Coughlin recognizes that he's going to get the full dose from Cincinnati. The pitch to Kajana Carter, and he is in the end zone. Well, let's give that drive to Boomer. He only had one incompletion on in the entire drive. The extra point is good. The fans are chanting Boomer, Boomer, Boomer. We want to welcome those of you that have been watching the Pittsburgh Philadelphia game in the background a moment ago the chanting of Boomer 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 Esiason leading the Cincinnati Bengals. This is the opening drive took as you see almost six minutes with Kajana Carter going in from a yard out and the Bengals are on top of Jacksonville by a score of seven to nothing with the extra point. Pittsburgh of course losing to Philadelphia as the viewers watching that game now know 23 to 20 and that means of course that if Jacksonville wins today they'll have to come from behind to do it but if they do that then that means of course they will have sole possession of first place in the central division. Yeah they and will. If they lose they'll still stay tied. They will move to nine and three but uh, this is what Tom Coughlin was most concerned about just what kind of emotional lift would a Boomer Esiason give to the Cincinnati Bengals and there have been very little very few things this season that is uh, that you could uh, deem an emotional lift excellent lead block up front by Milne the fullback the speed of Kajana Carter and now reduced to just being the touchdown scorer and it looks like Corey Dillon is going to be the big ball carrier excellent blocking on this side good reach blocks and then that big lead block by uh, Milne doing a, an outstanding job he just uh, absolutely crushes Eddie Robinson and Boomer had just one incompletion on that drive four of five in that opening drive and for Kajana Carter that is his sixth touchdown of the year and he does have the right helmet on you saw 63 on the back <laughs> Boomer is wearing his helmet. Willie Jackson is the deep back for the Jacksonville Jaguars on the return. Now Charlie there was an unsportsmanlike conduct penalty on Jacksonville on the extra point. So there's uh, 15 yards added to the kickoff here. Humphrey will be kicking from the 45 not the 30. Odds are he considered to the end zone from here. No he sends it a low a one hopper takes two hops. It's picked up by Jackson. Cincinnati. Fumble. Cincinnati may have the ball, and they do. Cincinnati with the ball at the 20 yard line. 
Battaglia recovers the fumble for the Bengals. Actually, Charlie, this was very smart on the part of the Cincinnati Bengals with the 15-yard penalty and just driving it down the field to make Jacksonville return it as opposed to running it through the kicking it through the end zone. You make them return it. You give your coverage team a little more room and a little more steam to get down there. And boy, he's carrying that ball out there very loosely. And Sam Shade, 35, hits him. Jackson's got that ball out there holding it like it's a grape, a big grape, and they knock it right away from him. Three wide receivers, Dylan the remaining back. Little play action fake. Boomer sets, throws back over the middle. He comes to Darnay Scott. Figures had the coverage. That's now six of seven for Boomer Esiason. 14 yard line, gain of six, second down four. And again, you see 63 in his helmet. I'll repeat it. It's for Joe Walter, a longtime Cincinnati Bengal who was waived earlier this season. Dylan, a little bit of hole on the right side. He'll go to the 12 yard line. It'll be third down. Ryan Schwartz with the tackle. Now, so far, Jacksonville not even close to being uh, in the mood to play this game. Not at all. I mean, the opening drive, you stand there and watch the turnover. And you can't give opponents on the road any kind of momentum, especially a three and eight football team. Third down. Boomer sets, throws. He goes to Pickens. Pickens almost dropped the ball of the nine yard line, but battled it all the way down his body for the reception and the first down at the nine. Dave Thomas had the coverage. Bruce Coslett, the head coach, offensive coordinator there was Ken Anderson, and Pickens is hurt. Hard to imagine any sort of an injury on that short of a, of a pattern. So we've got a timeout, and we'll be back in just a moment. Carl Pickens being assisted now onto the card. It's almost a, a mystery as to exactly what did happen. Yeah, this is just a, a short little hitch pattern run. And actually, it appears that part of the problem may be because he just didn't catch the ball cleanly. You know, they, they were not looking at anything in particular, but watch his right leg as he comes, puts it down right there. It kind of snaps, pops a little mm. bit. Can't really tell, but he's already hurt as he's on the ground. So it's not from the contact. But he's down. I think he's already hurt. He's hit. And I don't believe there's anything there. It looks like I, I, I can't imagine what it is, but he is being carted off. And David Dunn, number 80, will take his place. We, of course, will have a report for you as soon as it is passed on to us. Fourth play of the drive, the ball at the nine yard line. Esiason in the ball game is seven of eight for 60 yards. Pickens had four of those receptions for 35. First and goal, nine yard line. Trying to capitalize on the turnover, the fumble on the kickoff return. Cincinnati already leading 7 0. Size it, pump fake, throws in zone. There's Scott. Touchdown, Tony McGee. There's the man who had to fumble on the kickoff return. Was holding the ball very carelessly. And the chat boomer, boomer, boomer goes up again. As Cincinnati goes up 14 to nothing over Jacksonville. Jacksonville has yet to run an offensive play from scrimmage, and we're past the halfway mark of the first period. Looking at Boomer and Sison, and he is completely, completely involved in this ball game, more so than just being the starting quarterback. Willie Jackson is the deep back on the return. It is high and short. He has it at the 19-yard line. He turns across the 30, out near the 35 or the 36-yard line. And Jacksonville a chance to. Move on offense for the first time. Let's go back to the touchdown. Here's the man in motion. Watch the matchup here with the middle linebacker Schwartz. It's Tony McGee. Kind of fights by him. Uh, Sison has the faith that uh, McGee will run the right pattern, get loose, and he finds him for 
the second touchdown throw of the game and you said he's more involved this is the kickoff coverage team boomers in there now as the starting quarterback I got you 14 points now get out there if you can't do it I'll cover the next one that's the kind of player that boomer assassin was when he was here as a starter and as you said earlier in his heyday Charlie Jacksonville first down Natron Means will be dropped for a loss. Let's go now to New York City for an update. All right, thank you, Greg. Here is Cincinnati with an early lead over Jacksonville, 14 and I think second down 13. It's sack. James Francis. It'll be third and long. There is just no way to determine what a motion can do for a football team. Francis totally unblocked. First pass attempt by Mark Brunell. Francis is all over him. Two plays on offense for Jacksonville. Two losses. Three, third down and 20. And they're staring three and out right in the face, aren't they? Absolutely. Brunel in the shotgun. They run a pick on the near side. Pass is complete to Jimmy Smith, but stopped way, way shy of the first down. Sam Spade with the tackle, and so it is three and out. The Jaguars will have to kick it away, trailing 14 to nothing. Tom Coughlin on the sideline, absolutely beside himself. This is that real quick screen they try to run. Uh, Pete Mitchell 83 out there trying to make the first block but good inside out pursuit by Cincinnati shuts it down in a hurry. Oh good kick. Meyer stays away from it. It is spiked at the 10 yard line and down at that point by Jacksonville. So Cincinnati will have terrible field position when they start on their next drive. That will be the third of the afternoon when we come back in a moment. Sharing the excitement of the afternoon. That's little number seven. That's Gunner. That's Boomer and Science and Touch. <laughs> he, he is ready. As you know, he suffers from cystic fibro uh, fibrosis. Six years of age, and uh, he never thought that he'd be able to see his dad as a starting quarterback here in Cincinnati, and yet he's really enjoying the afternoon. Corey Dillon with the call, Seth Payne with the tackle. Yeah, of course, Gunner, or G as he's referred to, was, was just a year old when uh, Boomer left Cincinnati. So uh, he is enjoying the private box and the performance of his father so far. I and, also uh, and, and Boomer got the, he had he bought the private yes, box so, so his family could watch and they could watch indoors on days like this when it is going to be chilly. Yeah. I also know Gunner's up there with no shoes on. He's going to be a quarterback. Uh, he's he's a, going to be a quarterback. <laughs> Dylan again. Very conservative to the 18 yard line. It'll be third down and four. Chris Hudson with the tackle. Well, so far, these uh, two rookie defensive tackles for Jacksonville done a great job. And really staying right at the line of scrimmage. You see 91 Payne doing an excellent job with Bram, 74, just fighting for his position as he uh, leaves the field now. The pass rush group in for the Jaguars. Bengals have converted all three of their third down opportunities thus far in the ballgame. They have a 63-yard touchdown drive and a 20-yard touchdown drive. Now three wide receivers. The counter with Eric Bieniemy, and he's not going to make it. He'll get out to the 20-yard line, and Cincinnati will have to kick for the first time in the ball game. Chris Hudson with the tackle, and that means Lee Johnson will be in to kick it away. An audible call by a Boomer Esiason. He saw the six defensive backs, and they try to run a trap up through here with Bieniemy. But good discipline by the uh, defense in front of Jacksonville it really gives the enemy no place to go. And Brackens makes the tackle number 94. A little yardage. Reggie Barlow is the return man. Short kick. Makes the Cincinnati bounce and roll. End up pretty good. He's going to make it to the 35 yard line. Just inside the 35 yard line, so there is still hope 
all that fun that the Jaguars won't have that good a field position. They'll be on offense when we come back in a moment. Buff and his staff and the Jaguars, they don't play down. They don't to take a weekend off. So th this is a very unusual spot for Jacksonville. Natron Means. Cut off inside, slides outside, turns the corner, makes a nice move down the sideline and has the first down. First first down in the ballgame for the Jaguars. Let's look at that offensive line for Jacksonville. It's a good one, of course, with uh, Baselli out. Coleman moves out to left tackle. Novak making his first start of the year, although in previous seasons he started several games at several different spots. And Natron Means is certainly a guy who can uh, take the emotion out of Cincinnati. 20 yards on his last carry. First down for the Jaguars. Play action fake. Incomplete. Jimmy Smith, the intended receiver. Just enough pressure on Mark Brunell. Brunell's a yeller, too. Yeah, he'll get all over him. But the uh, defensive front three of the Cincinnati Bengals has been uh, a little suspect this year. They only have five active defensive linemen, so they'll stay with the three man front. Uh, this group, I don't know what to make of this one group linebackers and defensive backs. Some weeks they are great, other weeks they just disappear. Again, play action fake. Chess throws back to the near side. It's a little high. Pass is complete as Derrick Brown goes up and pulls it down. Brown is 6'6, weighs in at 263 pounds. Sam Shade had the coverage on him. Well, that was a beautiful throw by Mark Brunell. You're going to see it go right over the outstretched arms of the uh, of the safety, Sam Shade. Sets up pressure again, but watch Sam Shade right in front of the tight end. Boy, that's that's not an easy completion to make and Brunel makes it look very simple. Cincinnati 24 yard line first down. Double tight end on the set. Natron means. He'll lean for a yard possibly. They may not even give him that. So let's call it second down and 10. Gerald Dixon stopped it. And Coughlin now seeing a little more control. Some offense to get his football team back into this game. In case you just joined us, Cincinnati, the opening drive of the ball game, 63 yards in the score, then a fumble on the kickoff return, recovered by the Bengals, and they scored a drive of 20 yards. They're up 14 nothing. Here comes the blitz. Pressure right in his face. A oh, one hand touch. grab. For they know one marked the touchdown, then he marked it down, then he marked the touchdown again. It's Pete Mitchell. It's going to be the score. And we had three different signals from the officials in route to that six point. 24 yards and the TD. Well, Brunel got great pressure but stood right in there. You're going to see all kinds of people coming. And then Mitchell's going to show up in the end zone watch right just as he's about to run into a one handed grab by Pete Mitchell. Shade there in coverage. He rolls into the end zone, ruled a touchdown. That was impressive. <laughs> Brunel for his uh, courage and Mitchell for his athletic ability. An impressive drive that started at the Jaguars 35 yard line. Extra point is good. And Jacksonville cuts the Cincinnati lead in half. It's now Cincinnati 14 and Jacksonville 7 and we still have a minute 13. That is the time remaining in the first quarter. That was Pete Mitchell's fourth touchdown reception. Young man with the very sure hands and time and time again Mark Brunell when you watch him he, he displays his courage and uh, Mitchell is right here going to just run the the in pattern but watch the pressure up the middle on Brunell and just as he releases this ball there is a player right on his chest right now is still able to follow through and Mitchell with that big right arm sticks it out there and the ball sticks right in his hand again. The pressure Granville 91 right in Brunel's chest and he's still able to zip it down there for the score. You wonder if he has a strong arm. Mm -hmm. That is his 13th touchdown pass of the season. Against only four interceptions. That's one of the things I've always liked about Mark Brunel. He does not 
throw the ball around recklessly. David Dunn and Eric Bieniemy are the deep backs on the return. Mike Hollis will kick it off. High and short. Dunn moves up. He'll take it on about the 13 out to the 25. Pops to at the 30. He's to the 40. Has to beat the kicker. And one other back. Kicker bothers him for a moment and down the sideline. And he is caught at about the five yard line. They'll mark him out at the three. Who got it? Kevin Devon. The rookie corner from California had an angle on him and barely got him at the three. Whoa. Hello, Cincinnati. Tom Coughlin there talking to the special teams co coach, Larry Pasquale. You know, the thing that impresses me most about this kickoff return, the kicker almost caught David Dunn right up through the middle. Good timing. These returns always seem to be good timing. Breaks one tackle there, but now watch Hollis stay with it. I mean, it's a desperation run, but look, he runs with him. He misses does. the tackle. He, he committed himself too soon. He needed another step. Well, we'll work on that later. <laughs> but he, he kept running with it. He did. You're right. Look at this. I'm impressed. Most kickers just close their eyes and quit. We'll work on the tackling next week. But he made the effort. Three yard line. First down goal to go. 85 yards on the kickoff return. Decides it, quick throws. This one is incomplete. He's going to Brian Mill. It'll be second down goal to go. Not thrown well by a boomer. For that play to work, Travis Davis was right there on Mill, the fullback. For that play to work, it's got to be right in stride to the fullback to have him uh, turn it upfield into the uh, end zone. Only his second miss of the day. Kickoffs have been have been a disaster for Jacksonville on one of their returns. They fumbled it at the 20 yard line. Cincinnati recovered and went in and then Cincinnati on their kickoff at an 85 yard return. Here's Dylan end zone touchdown Cincinnati. Corey Dillon's fifth touchdown of the year. The margin, if the extra point is good, will be back to 14. Well, you always hope that you can answer a scoring drive with a scoring drive. An 85-yard kickoff return will definitely give you a leg up. And the leg up is good for Doug Pelfrey on the extra point. Cincinnati moves in front 21-7. We still have 49 seconds to go in the first. And Tom Coughlin doesn't know who to yell at first and loudest. The special teams, uh, you're right. The special teams have cost them a lot. From behind the offense, it's a straight dive play, a gut play run by Cincinnati. And boy, they spread out the defense just enough. And the nice cutback by Corey Dillon produces the score. Again, watch the way that defense suddenly gets spread out. Excellent blocking by Milne and Bram and Dylan at 225 easily into the end zone. A note for you to follow the NFL online at MSNBCSports.com. Randy Krause will compare West Coast football to Smash Mouth football. Gil Brand investigates the Cowboys coaching situation and where George Seifert may wind up next season. Plus, Tuesday at 8 p.m. Eastern, you can chat with New York Giants safety Jason Seahorn and Giants quarterback Danny Cannell. It's all MSNBCSports.com. And, of course, Boomer Esiason is the answer. You know, once you get a fumble <laughs> recovery and an 85-yard kickoff return, we told you it was Boomer Esiason. <laughs> Willie Jackson will field it at the 15-yard line for Jacksonville. He spun down at about the 27 or the 28 yard line by Sam Shade. Well, this Jacksonville team is not a team that gives up 21 points in any quarter. And at 8 and 3, you see Mark Brunell talking to Chris Palmer there, the offensive coordinator. The one thing about this Jacksonville football team, I don't think you'll see them panic. 
It's one of the things that I, that I admire Tom Coughlin for building into this football team. They're going to get a lot of chances. Just keep working at it, gentlemen. Just don't make the mistakes. Jacksonville at their own 29 yard line. First down. Double tight end set. Natron means stutter and step right at the hole. Plows through the middle out to the 38 yard line. He'll pick up about nine yards on the play. Jimmy Spencer, who has drawn the starting assignment over Tito Paul at right corner, makes the tackle. Now, the one thing for this to work, you always need a good cutoff block. And there's the cutoff block. It allows the little seam for Natron Means to get up through. Excellent job done by the by the tight end, number 88 for the Jacksonville Jaguars, Damon Jones. And then Natron Means can just look for that spot, that little gap in the defense. Means has rushed for 26 yards in the ball game. Slides down, breaks a couple of tackles across the 50 yard line. Billy Granville, who is starting at inside linebacker, makes the tackle. It's a first down as we come to the end of the first quarter with Cincinnati up by 14 points over Jacksonville. There they'll take it all afternoon and evening. Here's the draw, Means. Slides off to the right side. Dives inside the 20 to the 19, maybe the 18 yard line. It'll be third down and short. Ashley Ambrose and Sam Shade on the tackle. Now Bruce Crosby without the headset on. Nice draw here. Uh, the Bengals defense are ta they're taking some chances, uh, showing some blitzes, which if you can block up front offensively, there are going to be some seams in there. And uh, Jacksonville showing great patience here in their offense, not breaking out of their game plan yet, just going with what they thought during the middle of the week would work, even though they're down 21 7. Natron has already rushed for 51 yards in the ball game. Third down in the yard, Brunel rolling. A fake, he's got the first down. Almost to the five yard line. Out about the six or the seven, it'll be first down and goal to go. Now that's the X factor in Mark Brunel. Can throw it beautifully and will run. Even with that devastating knee injury, he suffered uh, in the preseason 5 1 a carry. And almost all the time that, that Mark Brunel runs, it is a devastating run. There's good coverage here by Cincinnati. He's going to fake the ball to McCardell, and it just freezes 33 Ashley Ambrose. And then kind of motors down there for the first down pickup. First down, goal to go. Jacksonville trailing by 14. Here's the fade into the corner. Knocked away. Good defensive play by Ashley Ambrose. He was trying to hit McCardell on the fade in the corner of the end zone. I don't know how he didn't intercept that. That went flat right through his hands. Good protection. Brunel puts it up, but watch this ball go right through Ashley Ambrose's hands. I mean, right through him. He had, uh, he led the team in interceptions last year, went to the Pro Bowl. I don't know how you miss an interception like that. Second and goal. Mean straight shot up the middle. He'll go to about the three yard line where it'll be third down and goal to go. Tom Olte along with the interior line for the bingo stop him with that boy. Offensive coordinator Chris Palmer there on the sideline. Of course spent years and years and years with Bill Parcells. Doesn't look worse nowhere no, though. No. And this offense has scored a bunch of touchdowns. They can get the ball in the end zone Charlie. Blitz on the shotgun blitz coming. Right over the middle. It is not enough. It is James Stewart on the receiving end. Greg Myers was right there. It's going to be fourth down and goal to go. I think he sent it in the field goal kicker, Tom Coughlin here. No, he sent in the play in. This is a gutty call. This is a screen on the goal line. You don't see that very often. Yeah, they're going for it on fourth down. Fourth down, goal to go. We've got a timeout. That stops the clock. 10:31 left to go in the second quarter. We'll be back in a moment. For the fourth down play, Cincinnati's defense started on the field. The Jaguars brought in four replacements.
replacements. Cincinnati had to change their defense immediately. They go now with four wide receivers in the shotgun. This is fourth down goal to go. Knocked away. James Francis makes the play. Charlie, they added one more receiver. There were five receivers out there. We kind of lost him in the shuffle. Francis is right here. You see Leon Searcy tries to get him to the ground. That's called fire protection. They want number 50 on the ground because they're going to Smith out here. But James Francis does a great job of getting up off of the block, extending himself, and knocking the ball away. Cincinnati taking over on downs. Faking the draw as size it comes out and goes deep. Has a man. Oh! Diving grab. He could not pull it in. Darnay Scott. Should have had it. Ball was there. A spectacular throw by Boomer Esiason. The ball was exactly where it should be. All Darnay Scott has to do is catch it. He never had to leave his feet, did he? No, he did not have to leave his feet. So it's second down and ten back at the three yard line. Dillon just works his way out. To give the Bengals a little bit of breathing room. It'll be third down. Travis Davis with the tackle. Now, now, see Tom Coughlin again. Make the tackle. Make the tackle. He's yelling at his players, not the officials or the Bengals. He's yelling at his players. They are playing out of personality to this point. Third down and three. Siasen throws pass is caught. It is a first down at the 16 yard line. James Hunden pulls it in. That is only his fifth reception on the season. And of course he's in there because Carl Pickens has strained a groin and is out. Hunden and the catch is going to take place right up here. Good protection again for Boomer Esiason. And again, receiver standing still, just enough to convert it. Because Boomer again sets throws, passes complete again. Darnay Scott has the reception here. Well, he picks up the energy level of the offense. He doesn't waste yeah. a lot of time, does yeah, he? He also can uh, look at a guy in that huddle and say, it's on you. you got to make this catch. This is a big play. With his experience in the league, he has earned the respect instantly of every player out there. Second down and three at the 23-yard line. Dylan clogged up. Slides up a couple of tacklers out across the 30, maybe to the 33 yard line. Figures finally stops him. Coughlin's going bananas on the sideline, isn't he? Yes, he is, because this is not the football team he brought to Cincinnati. Excellent job once again. Should be stopped there. Dylan, big, strong running back, breaks that tackle. And Tom Coughlin, come on, make the play. Make the play. He's yelling at Dick to anybody on his sideline, he's yelling at. Making the draw, Boomer steps forward, little side arm to the near side. That is Dillon. Dillon, an outside in move, goes to the 39 yard line. It'll be second down at that point. Kevin Hardy with the tackle. Now, Boomer has one additional advantage over Jeff Blake in this offense. He was here when this offense was invented. You know, with Sam White as the head coach, Bruce Cosley as the offensive coordinator, they invented this style of offense. So there's no offense he knows better. To the right side, Kijana Carter. Carter turns, flag is down. He goes down the side. It's only about the second flag we've had in the ball game. Travis Davis with the tackle. By the way, that was a beautiful throw on that flag, too. Oh, yeah. That, that, Good that arm. bad boy went 15, 20 yards. You want to see the Tom Coughlin story? His antics on the sideline. It'll go against the Bengals. There he is again. He does get involved. Yes, he, he does. And he's saying, get off the block, get off Haley, the block. Offense number 80, 10 yard penalty, repeat the down, second down. Dick Hantak, the referee. Call it on, done. Goes back to the 30 yard line. Yeah, David Dunn over here. Here's Dunn right here making the block on the defensive back. He's got some shirt. There's no question about that. First penalty against Cincinnati. Screen. Complete. Dejana Carter. 
Dion figures with the tackle. Charlie, I must make this comment at this point. Uh, this is a stout Jacksonville defense, but Ken Anderson, the offensive coordinator, now calling the plays, is getting the best of Tom Coughlin on the sideline. Uh, Anderson has not been calling plays for more than a month. Normally been Bruce Coslett calling those plays. And he has gotten the best. There's Ken Anderson right there. He has definitely gotten the best of Tom Coughlin and the Jacksonville defense. First down, 42 yard line. Throwing on first down to the 45 yard line. We go for a gain of three. Kobataglia on the receiving end. He, of course, recovered that fumble at the 20 yard line on the kickoff return of the Jaguars. It set up the Bengals' second touchdown. And the Tom Coughlin story continues on NBC this afternoon. Yeah, well, you know, get pressure, make the tackle, stop them, do something. And then, come on. Second down and six. Here's Dillon. Burns the corner, goes out of bounds. 46 yard line of Jacksonville, and that's the first down. Hudson chased him out. Again, now watch the corner. They do an excellent job here. That's Sergeant over there, number 77. He gets a good hook on the defensive end, and then Corey Dillon just follows that block. All you got to do is keep him engaged. That's on Brackens, number 90. I consider Brackens one of the great young defensive ends in the league. Three wide receivers on first down. Boomer sets, five step drop. Scrambles for it again. Second time in the ball game, he's done that. And he'll scramble for about eight yards on the play. Eddie Robinson covers him on the slide. A good pressure that time by Jeff Logaman, number 56 at defensive end. Watch Logaman on Boomer, former teammates with the New York Jets and very close friends. Boomer senses him somehow and makes a, a positive out of a negative, and Logaman denied the sack on his buddy. Second down three. Whoa! Maybe one of the few bad throws that Sison has made in the ballgame. And Payne, 91, right in his chest. Boomer now 13 of 17, 106 yards, and a touchdown. Five and a half minutes left to go in the second. Remember this drive? It started back at the three yard line when Cincinnati held Jacksonville, fourth down and goal to go. Cincinnati up by 14, 21 7. Dillon cuts back as the first down. Blowing him up at the line of scrimmage, Charlie. Cincinnati not playing like a three and eight team, and Jacksonville certainly not playing like an eight and three team. Logan with a tackle at the 33 yard line. And again, a good stretch by the offensive line separates the defensive line and allows there's that cutoff block again by Sargent, allows that little gap in the defense for him to look around there's Dick Duran defensive coordinator formerly a player for Cincinnati and an assistant coach or kind of a graduate assistant coach Brian Mill the fullback back in the ball game he's a lead blocker Dillon opens a hole he'll have 10 in the first down Ryan Schwartz with the tackle may have saved a touchdown with that tackle he was really going and Charlie they are absolutely doing a job on the defensive ends again watch here we're running at the same spot the perimeter we've seen this in the first half excellent job by McGee on Lagerman this is remarkable 15 first downs to seven and Tom Coughlin recognizes this game is quickly getting away from his football team John and Carter back in the ball game for Cincinnati. He takes the pitch. Has the corner and also has about nine yards on the play to the 15 yard line where Hudson finally gets it. Uh, we have a player down. Charlie, this is a recurring theme, isn't it? Coughlin nuts on the sideline and the Cincinnati Bengals capturing the corner running at the perimeter. Clock is stopped with the injury timeout. 349 is the time remaining in the first half. We'll step aside. We'll be back in a moment. Tuaolo replacing Ronaldo Wynn who was the injured Jaguar. The 
as we go back to action with Corey Dillon Carey. That is the 15th play of this drive that started back at the three. And there is number 97, the number one draft choice out of Notre Dame, Ronaldo Wynn. Uh, seems to be up watching the action, so it looks like his intention is to get back in the ball game. But uh, the Bengals have now found a weakness, and that is the perimeter of this Jacksonville defense. Look at it. 15 plays, 83 yards, seven minutes time of possession, and trying to add to a 21 7 score. Third down and one. Dijana Carter has the first down. Slips a tackle at the line of scrimmage and picks up a couple of yards for the first down. Kevin Hardy to Aola with the tackle. Uh, the thing about Kajana Carter, he has such unbelievable speed. Watch the block by the fullback right here. You're going to see that. And then the, the acceleration by Kajana Carter doesn't avoid many tacklers, but he just gets so much momentum building. He's very difficult to tackle, and it carries him for the first down. Ronaldo win with a cramped right calf. He can return to the ball game. First down for Cincinnati, 11 yard line of Jacksonville. Pump fake, fires into the end zone, touchdown. Darnay Scott. Ah, Gunner Celery. That is Darnay Scott's second touchdown of the year. And Boomer spreads him around. Carter, Dillon, Scott, and McGee have all scored. That's a 93-yard, 17-play drive. Belfry with the extra point. Cincinnati destroying Jacksonville 28 to 7. We'll be back in a moment. Boomer Esiason. He has the magic. Congratulated by Jeff Blake, the guy who uh, Boomer replaced. Good friends, very close. Boomer understands his situation. Trying to uh, show Jeff Blake how to handle this. And 28 7 in the first half against uh, Jacksonville. 17 plays, 97 yards, 8 minutes and 14 seconds. Taking over on downs. Holding the Jaguars yep. at their own three yard line, fourth down goal to go. A 14 point swing. Seven Jacksonville didn't get, and seven Cincinnati did get. Willie Jackson is the deep back. He's out to the 15, the 20, and he'll be dropped at that point. Steve Tovar makes the play, and there's a flag down. And now the flag is picked up. It was at the 19. Now it's been tossed out to the 24. It'll go against the Jaguar. Tom Coffin starring in a sitcom this afternoon. His reaction. Holding number 29 of the kicking team. 10 yard penalty. First down. Next Sunday, exciting NFL action continues with a doubleheader beginning at 12 noon Eastern time with the NFL on NBC. And in game one, most of you to see these Bengals take on the Eagles. Others will see the Ravens face the Jaguars or the Jets battle the Bills. Game two, most of you to see the Steelers face the Cardinals. Others will see the Dolphins and the Raiders. So check your local listings for the game in your area. That's the NFL on NBC doubleheader next Sunday, starting out at 12 noon Eastern time. Jacksonville comes out throwing on first down deep in their own territory. Cardell, he picks up the first down with about seven yards to spare, and he also picks up a yellow flag along the way. Greg Myers makes the tackle, so we'll now sort it all out for you. Well, Jacksonville is walking back like it's a penalty on them. There is no foul on the play. It was a legal block. It was a legal block. It was a legal block out to the 26 or the 27 yard line. So two minute warning now will be given to both benches. We'll step aside. Cincinnati up 28 to 7. Cincinnati up 28 7 156 time remaining in the first half. From the shotgun Brunel now has completed 8 of 12 
for 97 yards and a touchdown. This time he goes to Pete Mitchell. They're in the hurry up offense. It'll be second down about a yard for the first down. Conserving his timeout. Throws for the first down. The hurry up offense will continue. This time it's James Stewart out of the backfield. Ashley Ambrose with the tackle. Now they'll stop the clock with the timeout. 128. That is the time remaining in the first half. The Bengals are up by 21 points. Back in a moment. 128. That is the time remaining. Bengals are leading by 21. Both ball clubs now with two timeouts remaining. And don't forget. Coming up at halftime, the Domino Pizza NFL on NBC Halftime Report with Greg Gumbel. Joe Gibbs is back for the rest of the year. Sam White, Chris Collinsworth, they'll bring all the scores and highlights of today's action around the league. They'll have a lot of highlights from this ball game, first half of this ball game, and also for the Pittsburgh ball game because Pittsburgh lost today. And it looks as if right now Jacksonville is losing, so the tie would remain atop the Central. We've got whistles and flags. We have a false start against the Jaguars. The preliminary signal. Here's Dick Hantak. Delay a game. Offense. Five yard penalty. Still first down. Well, one of the officials did signal. He signaled. False start. Yeah, he did. And then Dick Hantak, the referee, corrects it. Please reset the game clock to read one minute and one minute and 28 seconds. Tom Coughlin starting in days of our lives as he faces the sideline. Yeah, he has been, shall we say, animated, yes. animated so far in the first half. First down 15. Brunel goes deep. Great catch. And it is caught. Great catch. McCardell with the catch with two Bengals all around him. Clock is moving. Ashley Ambrose right on him. That was a great catch. 34 yards on the play. And the spike that stops the clock now with a minute and five seconds. Well, they called the right play. They caught the Bengals in the blitz. And McCardell does an excellent job of staying with this football. And the, the throw is going to be out here. But at the end of this play, watch the way McCardell concentrates on the football. Good pickup up front by all for all the blitzers. Stays right with it. That is a monster catch by McCardell. Second down and ten. Here's a straight shot at the middle of the slide at the ten. We've seen Boomer do that a couple of times. And like Bob mentioned earlier, that's a straight scramble. Absolutely. I mean, and that's the X factor when you've got a guy like Mark Brunell, McNair down in Tennessee. Uh, these young men can run and will run quickly. Inside handoff. James Stewart. And you get almost to the 10 yard line. 33 seconds and counting. That will stop the clock with 32 seconds left. Sam Shade with the last tackle. Well, this has been impressive. The Bengals have gone with six defensive backs, but the Jaguars started at their own 11 yard line with a minute and 56 seconds left to go. And they have gotten yards in big chunks here at the end of the first half. And 11 is the magic number there at the 11 yard line of Cincinnati with a first down and 32 seconds remaining and one timeout remaining. Yeah, and points here, a touchdown here kind of salvages this first half for Jacksonville. Points against the Bengals kind of takes away some of the thunder of the 28 points scored in the half and the 21 in the first quarter. So it's important for both teams. One to stop them. If the Bengals can hold Jacksonville to just a field goal, that's fine. And I think Tom Coughlin understands that he needs a touchdown here, just to some positive feeling for his football team. Would you take from the 11 yard line so you still have some room to work with? And you, you know, as you're getting closer, it's harder to throw, as you well know. Throw the end zone? Throw the end zone three straight times. Absolutely, I would. Okay. This one is incomplete. End zone was covered, just dropping it off to James Stewart, who dropped the ball. Keenard Wilson was there. We've got a flag down. And I think that was a design screen. Illegal man downfield. Yeah, they're trying to run a screen, which was a good call because it was man coverage by Cincinnati. 
And an offensive lineman is illegally downfield. Ineligible, number 63, downfield prior to the pass. Five yard. Repeat the down, first down. This is a good call, but watch the center. When he releases, he releases too far down the field. It is on 63. The throw comes late, and it blows up the timing, and he's illegally downfield. Question. With the penalty, they get the down over at the 16-yard line. Should they have refused it? No. No. Uh -uh. Okay. It's a good choice. The, the Jaguars get an extra down. Along the sideline, no, it is incomplete. Or he saw you was there for the defense. Jimmy Smith, the intended receiver. And Charlie, the, the reason they refused that penalty and backed him up is that it, the Bengals believe that they can keep him from scoring at all. I mean, it, they're going to try their very best to shut him out in this situation to win this little battle at the end of the first half here. That's why they give him the extra down. Second down. At the three yard line. Pass is complete to McCardell. Meyer stops him. This may be a fake of the spike. No, it is a spike. Remember that one that Marino set up? Yes, that was against the New York Jets, and the Jets have still not forgotten that. Now, the seven seconds left. This is a tough spot. Two downs. Two yeah. downs remain. Yeah, this is a very tough spot. Seven seconds is just about what you'd allot for a field goal kicker. And they're going to send him on. That, that little hesitation there by Mark Brunell ate up the time for the play. Now, wait a minute. He's, look, what's he going to do? He's sending him out. He's playing in percentages here. I'll take the field goal for some saving grace for this first quarter. I mean, for this first half. An incomplete pass in the end zone. How many seconds would that take? Well, you're, are you flirting with seven seconds? Yes, it's not going to take seven. But now the you, clock is moving. They moved it down to three. It shouldn't. Well, they just did. It was at seven, and now it's at three. Well, and then Jacksonville took its final time out of the first half, so there's nothing left on the clock, and he is going to settle for the field goal. Once he gets inside of four, there are no options. Yeah, the, the, at seven, that, that's the magic number at the end of the game they have. I mean, you practice how long it takes for a pass play to take place. You can't have any pressure. The guy's got to run a precise pattern. And Tom Coughlin wants to come out of here with points. This is an excellent drive, and he won't yell quite as much if Hollis makes his field goal. From the 11-yard line, an attempt at 21 yards by Mike Hollis. It is good. That is eight in a row for Mike Hollis, 19 of 23. But the first half belongs to Cincinnati. No question about it. 28 to 10 at halftime. Stay with us this evening and stay tuned for Greg Gumbel and the Domino Pizza Halftime Report. We'll have that for you right after these messages from your local station. This is the NFL on NBC. Three step drop. Timing pass down the sideline, diving, gravity, got it. Jimmy Smith with the reception down the sideline. That's a tough reception, too, isn't yeah. it? Jimmy Spencer was the man in coverage. Here's the matchup right here, man to man. It's what they're looking for, the little stutter step. Spencer buys it, and then Smith stays with it, lays out to make that 34-yard catch in a big play for Jacksonville's offense. Cincinnati 35-yard line, first down, opening drive, second half. Another completion, this one for another first down. This will go to the 23-yard line. McCardell on the receiving end. Ambrose had the coverage. That's a good solid throw by Mark Brunell. We're not quite two minutes into the second half. 
and the Jaguars are underway just outside the 20 yard line or the red zone of Cincinnati. Natron means getting the call. Just a couple of yards on the play so it'll be second down and eight. Tumulty with the tackle for Cincinnati. Charles on the sideline without the headset several weeks ago gave up the headset more administrative duties defense is in the hands of Dick LeBeau. Offense is in the hands of uh, Ken Anderson. He's calling the plays. And Bruce kind of administrates there on the sideline. Cheerleader, instructor, teacher, coach. Play action fake. Left hand quarterback rolling left and then throwing to Pete Mitchell, his tight end, who has scored a touchdown in the ballgame. Clock will continue to move, and Gerald Dixon makes the tackle in the field of play. And when you have a quarterback of the uh, athletic ability of Mark Brunell, who can run, will run, even with the knee brace and the in the big knee injury, it really helps the offense. You see on the roll the way the defense kind of has to hang back because you're not sure if Brunell is going to throw it or run it. And the Mitchell appears up underneath, and actually that's a very good tackle made by Dixon, 51, to holding to just a, a three or four yard gain. Third down five. of those definitive downs of the ball game early in the second half. Fade end zone knocked away. Going into the corner with a timing pattern to McCardell Bo Orlando went up to knock it away. He was there along with Greg Meyer. And McCardell still almost makes the catch. <laughs> These are big physical receivers. It's going to happen up here in the corner. And the, the corner gets help from the inside for Orlando. Just puts it up just enough and Mercado still almost makes the catch. Mike Hollis with a 21 yard field goal at the end of the first half. Now at the beginning of the second will attempt one from 35. It is good. From 35 yards away. And Jacksonville starts to creep up on Cincinnati 28-13. Eleven twenty nine time remaining third quarter. Almost a two touchdown ball game now. Twenty eight thirteen. Mike Hollis to kick it away. James Hunden and Eric the enemy are the deep backs. Now David Dunn has an eighty five yard kickoff return for Cincinnati in the first half. He is not back on this kickoff return. Here is Hunden. And the line of scrimmage will be the 34 yard line. Boomer Assassin. Not a bad half, Charlie. 14 of 18, just 117 yards, but maybe most impressively, seven different receivers. And when you uh, have seven different receivers catching passes, you don't have a defense that's really doing its job. Uh, there are players open all over the field. Assassin quickly going on first down, and he opens up with a connection to Tony McGee. Flag down, Kevin Hardy with the tackle. Boomer doesn't waste any time. Does no, he? I think that's what they caught him. They were not all set. <laughs> yeah. Boomer was just a little quick there. You try a lot of different things. Now, this is not Boomer's idea. Number 80 was not set prior to the snap after coming out of the huddle. Five yards. First down. Uh, Charlie, this is not Boomer's idea, but this is Bruce Goslett Ken Anderson's idea to let's hurry it up a little bit so that Jacksonville can't make shifts in their defense. First down 15. Incomplete. Tagley of the intended receiver. In the right flat, so it'll be second down and 15. And I said, see Boomer just plotted the direction of uh, Marco Bataglis and that's my bet. I didn't throw it well. That's my fault, not your fault. That's one of the things that uh, Boomer Sison has always done. You know, he'll take the blame, but he also spreads the front blame around. Second down 15. Boomer has pressure and is dropped. He is sacked at the 20 yard line. And Charlie, I believe that's one of the first that's the first time I've seen Jacksonville blitz all day long. Kevin Hardy gets him. They have played it. Jacksonville has played it very conservative to this point. 
But finally, here's Hardy right here. He's going to come from the inside. It's a very late blitz, but he's free on Boomer Esiason, and Boomer can't get away. So they run one blitz. They get a sack. It's a good call. Dick Jerron putting a little more pressure. Uh, down 28-13. Try to get the turnover. Get Cincinnati to make a mistake. Third down, 24. Boomer to throw. Has a lot of time. Comes off with his sidearm underneath the coverage incomplete. So it'll be fourth down 24. Cincinnati will be kicking. And Jacksonville can come up with pretty good field position with any kind of a return. Yeah, and, and a good job of just kind of slowing the momentum down here of Cincinnati. They were so hot in the first and second quarter, the early stages of the second quarter. Lee Johnson kicking to Reggie Barlow. Takes it at the 42-yard line. He really hesitates a lot on the return. Doesn't get as much yardage as you thought that he might. Gerald Dixon with the tackle will step aside. Back in a moment. Downtown Cincinnati in the background where they were playing Christmas carols today. 28-13 the score. This time Jacksonville will start from their own 49-yard line. Last drive they started for the 27. And they ended up with three points going deep as single coverage. Knocked with good defensive flag down. Whoa! Want to take a look at this? Jimmy Spencer on Keenan McCardell. Flag on Spencer. Well, they were both looking back at the football. I like the play. I like the way they played it. I do not like the flag. Let's see what the instant replay shows. It's still going to be first down goal to go, Jacksonville. Interference, defense number 22, first down. Well, with the adjustment in pass interference right up here at the top, let's see what we can pick up. They're both looking back at the football. What we don't see is Jimmy Spencer's left hand. See the left hand on the shoulder pad? Kind of spun him around. The official is standing right there and immediately grabs the flag and throws it. And I think that's probably why. First down, goal to go. Here's Natron Means on the draw, jumping to the outside, trying to get in the corner, and he has the touchdown. The penalty and Natron Means, and all of a sudden, Jacksonville is right back in the middle of this ball game. Yeah, and my card says when you're down by 15. You go for one. Now you're down by nine. You go for two. Let's see what Jacksonville does. Every team's two point card is different, but trailing by, by nine. Let's see what Jacksonville does here. They send out their kicker. And this stadium has suddenly gotten relatively quiet, hasn't it, Charlie? Yes, it is. The extra point is good. Jacksonville right in the middle. We'll be back with a kickoff in a moment. The margin is eight. One minute and 33 seconds between scores for Jacksonville. 13 unanswered points starting right at the end of the first half. And you saw 22, the big penalty on him, the pass interference penalty. London and Bienemy are the deep backs on the return. A line drive. This is Bienemy. Bienemy to the straight shot to the 40-yard line. Oh. The last man nailed him. I mean, that's that's who was waiting for him was Curtis Anderson, and he had to get it. NBC tonight. Again, the hurry of offense. The science is just simply not waiting at all as he gets everything underway. Corey Dillon getting the call. And now Cincinnati has to regain some of the first half magic. Yeah, you, you, you need to establish some control. And the way you do that is to uh, try to turn Corey Dillon loose. 14 to 21 now for Boomer Esiason in the uh, first series of the second half. Three downs and out. And those 13 unanswered points now puts a lot of pressure on this offense, Charlie. Second and eight. 
Here's Dillon to the corner. Has the first down. Bumbles the ball out of bounds. Bengals will retain possession. Now that's what they discovered in the first half. Running at the perimeter. And Chris you're gonna, gets him. Go ahead. And you're going to see one heck of a block by the fullback. Watch Mill. Watch Mill. Watch Mill. Boom. Up ends a safety. Allows a gap for Corey Dillon to uh, pick up 16 yards on that run. So again now Tom Coughlin on the sideline and trying to uh, talk to his defense. Make the tackle. Control the line of scrimmage. down Cincinnati. Boomer throwing on first down. Nice touch. Receiver is there. Knocked out of his hands. Good defensive play by Brian Schwartz. Tony McGee had it in his hands and he knocked it away. Oh, and this is the perfect call. Jacksonville had a five-man defensive front. And actually, McGee on the inside, he doesn't look very comfortable. This should be a catch. See, he kind of hesitates and Bounces around. You want to keep running as smoothly as possible. You should have that ball. But again, good job by the middle linebacker Schwartz to just knock that ball away. Second down and ten. No running room for Dylan. He'll lose a couple of yards. Back to the 44-yard line. It's going to be third down and 12. All right, now here's the adjustment that Jacksonville is now making. You're going to see from behind the offense a blitz by the middle linebacker to fill another gap. This is a run blitz. They do not want the Bengals to reestablish some control of this game with the run, so they're going to go with the run blitz. An excellent defensive call by Dick Jerron. Difference in run blitz and pass blitz. Put a guy in each gap. Make sure that the point of attack is covered by a defender. That's in the throw. Underneath the coverage, this is Dillon diving about three yards shy of the first down. That was third down and 12. Tough choice here. Fourth down and two or three. Long field goal attempt or go for it. I think the decision's already been made. I don't see any kicker going out there. Fourth down and three. Well, when you're three and eight, I think you can make these decisions. When you're eight and three, I'm not sure this is as easy a, a decision to make. You're going to attempt a B-52 yards, though. Unless you want to try and pooch kick it into the corner and out of bounds. Size in the throw for it. It's there. Tony Martin, the tight end. Converting on fourth down to keep the drive moving. And don't forget, Cincinnati is leading by eight points. McGee again, the man in motion. Good protection allows Boomer time to set. Wait, McGee this time turns in as opposed to turning out. And an easy completion for the conversion. Back to Dillon. To the 22 yard line. Second and seven. Kevin Hardy with the tackle. 6.45 and counting. That's the time remaining in the third quarter. Well, Jacksonville did exactly what Tom Coughlin wanted them to do to uh, start the second half. Points, control the game. They, uh, they put uh, Cincinnati in three downs and out situation first time they had it. And then they score those 13 unanswered points, but now Cincinnati regaining some control. Boomer's pass is complete over the middle. Darnay Scott. He looks over the middle. He comes back. He looks left. He comes back and he nails Scott over the middle. 18 yards on the play just outside the five yard line. Charlie look at his little look out here in the flat right here to Corey Dillon right there. What that does is it draws the middle linebacker out about two steps and the receiver is wide open. I mean just one of those veteran jobs you hope a quarterback can learn. Boomer executed it beautifully there. First down goal to go. Play action fake. Stands back. Oh, almost. Oh, he threw it right into the bread basket of a defender. How did he miss it? And he dropped it. Was that Dion Figures? He was probably so surprised to see the ball. How did he miss it? It was a perfect pass. Got him between the numbers. Charlie, it looked to me like Figures was on the ground in the end zone, and Boomer Assassin didn't see him. I don't know how in the world he missed it. He gets inside. 
Burns there. There it is. But, uh, Figures is a good interceptor. I don't know how he misses that one. Here's Dillon. Leans to about the four. Well, Figures has four interceptions on the year. And he's one of those free agent acquisitions that, that's helped the Jacksonville defense so much back uh, as a free agent. He took just one trip. He went to Jacksonville and said, I'm coming here. Of course, Leon Searcy, who used to be in Pittsburgh, helped him. But the figures has turned out to be a great acquisition for Jacksonville. Robinson and Davis on that last tackle. The 11th play of the drive. Boomer into the end zone. No, incomplete. That's catchable, too. Darnay Scott. Mm. It'll be fourth down. So Doug Pelfrey will come out. Pelfrey is at 7 of 11, the long 46. Let's go back to the incompletion. Yeah, it's going to take place right in here. Again, good protection. Boomer waits, waits, waits. Boy, it's wide Ooh, open. Yes. I don't know how Darnay Scott cannot that catch. He's dropped too many this year. 20 yards away is good for three. And we have a marker down. Everybody's shaking their head. Defense, number 27, lined up in the neutral zone. The penalty is declined. Hold it, hold it. Wait, wait, wait a minute. Now, that was on the three-yard line. That would yeah. take it to a yard and a half out. He might want to do it and go sure. for it. Bruce is going to the side and saying, how close would it have been? Half the distance to the goal, so it have been fourth and a yard and a half. Mm -hmm. Do you take the three points off the board? Always dangerous to take points off the board, isn't it? Yeah. But a three and eight. Yeah. And a yard and a half out. Why not, Bruce? Go for it. No, it was refused. They will take ah. the points. <laughs> Offside. Line up in a neutral zone. Penalty is declined. Right. Field goal is good. Belfry with a 20 yard field goal. Cincinnati now 31 to 20. The margin is 11. 454 left in the third. Thirty-one twenty, Cincinnati leads by eleven. Pelfrey will kick it away. Jackson is the deep back. This is a good one. His best of the night. Out to the fifteen. Twenty across the twenty-five, down around the twenty-eight yard line. No flags on the play. The NFL season extends to the World Wide Web on NFL.com, the league's official website. So be sure to visit NFL.com for all the scores and stats, including a complete roundup of this weekend's scores in action, plus chat live with some of the NFL's biggest stars. It's all at NFL.com. Jacksonville this time starts from their 28-yard line. They started from the 27 and their 49, their first two possessions of the second half. Vito Paul is in at corner. Natron means. Man, he's a load, isn't he? Absolutely. <laughs> he just when, keeps on. He's the energizer money. He keeps on keeping on. Yeah, and Charlie, when he's in the mood, <laughs> Sam Shea for the tackle. He is one of the most devastating running backs I think there is in the NFL. But there are stages of the season where he either with an injury or whatever else he's not in the mood. Well we have telecasts like that. Sure <laughs> we do. Everybody everybody has a bad right. day at the office. Absolutely. Oh. But he only goes to the office once a week. <laughs> That's a big difference. <laughs> Going deep into double coverage. And it is caught again. Another great catch this one by Jimmy Smith. Jaguars are killing the Bengals deep. And Charlie, they took Jimmy Spencer, number 22, out because Smith had beaten him. They put in Tito Paul, and Jimmy Smith does the same thing to him. And you see inside the safety does try to help number 31, Greg Myers, but another outstanding catch by Smith. 
46 yards on the play. Here come the Jaguars once again. Natron means inside the 15 to the 14 yard line. And uh, the only thing wrong with that big catch by Jimmy Smith is at the 14 yard line. These receivers from Jacksonville don't have a whole bunch of room to roam. <laughs> right. So it, it gets a little more difficult for Jacksonville to beat up these cornerbacks. And Bruce Cosett right there shoulder to shoulder with Dick LeBeau, the defensive coordinator. Second and seven. Blitz. Into the corner and away. Out of time, out of coverage. Out of the ballpark, incomplete. Third so down and seven. Charlie, actually, to this point, the Bengals' defense has been that in that bend not break mode. You know, they've given up the big play, big pass play, but they've they've at least uh, made Jacksonville settle for field goals in it after these big situations. So they don't mind giving up a lot of yards if it doesn't produce points. Three wide receivers. This to the 10 yard line and that's going to be all they're going to get on the play about three yards shy of the first down as Jimmy Smith pulls it in. Tito Paul wraps him up immediately and the field goal team will come in to try and add three more. But why run a five yard pattern. Or why throw a five yard pattern. Well, You're right. I don't agree. Okay, I don't understand. We'll put blame on both of them. Yeah. yeah. But again, this is a plus for Cincinnati. They give up the big pass reception mm -hmm. for 46 yards. Jacksonville has to settle for an attempt at three points. 29 yard field goal attempt. Wallace is hit from 21 and 35. He's now three for three as he's hit from 29 yards away. So Jacksonville creeps back on Cincinnati. The Bengals lead 31 23. Back with the kickoff in a moment. Tito Paul on the sideline there. He's the one who gave up the big catch to Jimmy Smith. Now he's yelling at a, at a teammate somewhere. That's Spencer trying to break him up. Tito Paul replaced Jimmy Spencer. Jimmy Smith now has gone over a thousand yards for the season. Four receptions, 89 yards today. Now last year, 83 catches, 1,244 yards. Little known, but much respected inside the league as one of the game's best, Jimmy Smith. 64 receptions on the year. Here's the catch. And then on the return. You may wonder why uh, David Dunn has not been returning. Well, he's replaced Carl Pickens as a starter, one of the wide receivers, so he's not on the special teams as we go to New York for an update. Uh, just under two and a half to play in the third, Charlie. <laughs> Because Boomer simply doesn't waste any time. He hands off to Corey Dillon. We're speeding up all of our promos and all of our little notes that we're getting in. And we're caught looking down a couple of times. And we'll have to have Greg tighten up his updates for us. Yeah. Do you like that? The, yeah, the, the it's pace? game planning. Sure, it's game planning. If you face a defense that likes to shift their defense, mm -hmm. you, you let the offensive line and receivers get to the line of hurry. Kind of ambles up there and then looks around, bam, snap the ball. Goes up first down, doesn't it? Here's Corey Dillon. He'll pick up a couple of yards on the play. It'll be third down. Now one of the secrets to the Bengals' success today has been their ability to convert on third down and also fourth down. And with the points again scored by Jacksonville on that last time, even though it's just three, another big third down situation here. Third and seven and for the day, six of ten. Very positive numbers for Cincinnati. Boomer swings this one into the flat. Mill, the fullback, pulls it in, and he's pulled down by Eddie Robinson. So it'll be three and out for Cincinnati as we're counting down the end of the third quarter. Jacksonville is on the move and yeah, that was a great tackle by Eddie Robinson no help out there one on one with the fullback and he stops him for a little or no game. You saw Reggie Barlow he's the return man Lee Johnson will be punting. Oh, 
Doesn't turn over. Moves up and takes it to the 34 yard line. Slips a tackle. Uh -oh. He's to the 50. Cuts back. Jacksonville has great field position as we take the count down to the end of the third quarter. Corey Sawyer with the tackle. Don't go away. This one's not over. Back after these messages from your local station. By the authority. As we start the fourth quarter, the scoring by quarters, the margin is eight points. At one point in the ballgame in the second quarter, Cincinnati led by 21. And Jacksonville has great field position, Cincinnati 42. Charlie, I didn't mean to interrupt, but yeah. 89 yards today has been a huge factor in this comeback by Jacksonville. Jimmy Smith has been the deep guy for Mark Brunell. He's now being chased. He throws it away, which he, of course, can do once he gets outside of the tackles. That is allowable. You could say Derrick Brown was the intended receiver, but that's not true. The cameraman was the intended yes. receiver out of bounds. Uh, Dan Wilkinson, first time we've called his name, he's sitting right here. Good pressure by the foreman in front of the Bengals. Uh, Big Daddy gets number 99, gets in outside the uh, the guard's shoulder, flushes Brunel to the sideline. Second down and ten. Three wide receivers from the shotgun. Blitz coming pressure up the middle. Rolls away. Sets. Throws it deep. It is intercepted at the two yard line. We have a flag down back up field. Bo Orlando has the interception. McCardell the intended receiver. But there's a marker. Well, that's one of the uh, poorest choices I've seen Mark Brunell make. Cincinnati has the ball at their own six yard line when we come back. Million investors put their trust. Here we go again with Cincinnati. They simply cannot wait to let us get our telecast on the air. Charlie, we got to go back to the interception. You're going to see Mark Brunell flush from the pocket, and then when he gets out here, he makes a very poor choice, something that Mark Brunell seldom does. Running against his arm, his arm just kind of puts it up there, and he's hoping McCardell can make the catch. Bo Orlando with the interception. That's not something that Mark Brunell does very often. Boomer drops this one off into the right flat. This is Dillon up the sideline and the first down outside the 25 yard line. Fringy with the tackle. Well they have escaped again. Nice little swing pass to Corey Dillon out in the flat. There was decent pressure by Jacksonville. And if there's one thing that Cincinnati has done all afternoon long here in Cincinnati is just escape. They've been in some tough spots and been able to get themselves out of it. 13 minutes, 39 seconds left in the ball game. Boomer going deep, has single coverage, and this one is almost intercepted. Dave Thomas with the coverage on James Hunden. Second down and 10, back of the 25 yard line. Actually, this ball is just slightly underthrown. Dave Thomas, number 41. Jacksonville fans may remember last year game on this field broke his femur and uh, has recovered nicely and is now one of the real big hitters of this defensive backfield for Jacksonville. Good coverage there. Second and ten. Well the fullback is John Carter now the tailback. Carter carries and rock. Good defensive play. Clyde Simmons and Seth Payne were both there. Again, now it puts the Cincinnati in a, in a tough spot. Third and 13. And the last three times they've had the ball, of course, that, that 12 play drive for the time at eight off the clock and the three points. A little breathing room, but here again, another big third down situation for Cincinnati and Jacksonville.
Boomer drops this one in the flat to Carter. Carter at the sideline and out of bounds at the 31 yard line. He'll come up about four yards shy of the first down. Eddie Robinson chased him out, and Cincinnati will have to punt the ball. Yeah, so the interception cost Jacksonville no points. Certainly time off the clock. Lee Johnson will be kicking. Reggie Barlow is the punt return man for the Jaguars. Whoa. Snappy gets it back and gets a pretty good kick off. Here is Barlow to the 30, the 35, the 40, the 50. Inside the 40 and still going and down. At the 25 yard line and remember the line of scrimmage was the 31 so the return out distance the kick 49 yards on the return of a 35 yard kick. Greg Truitt makes the tackle and he is a snapper for Cincinnati. Here's another look. Well Charlie in the first half special teams really cost Jacksonville. They had a fumble. On a kickoff return and then allowed an 85 yard kickoff return. And here, the special teams pay dividends for Jacksonville. Now, wonderful field position. Cincinnati, 27 yard line, first down. Do you go to the end zone right here? No. All right. Natron means maybe a yard. Dumbledore with a tackle. Uh, the, the, the reason I, I state so categorically no. Uh, you're down by eight. There's 11:55 and counting to go. You want to pound this defense a little bit. You want to soften it up some. You don't have to throw it every down. Grinnell can, but Means is a good uh, a good guy to have in your backfield right now. He's a good hammer. Three-step drop, up fires incomplete. Smith, the attendant receiver. Suddenly, it's going to be third down and nine yeah. at the 26-yard line. Tito Paul with the coverage. Jaguars within field goal range. And I saw Chris Palmer, the offensive coordinator on the sideline, making the call. Dick LeBeau trying to answer with the correct defensive call. They trail by eight. If they fail here and counter with the field goal, the margin would be five. Cincinnati shows blitz, and it's coming. Pass is oh, complete. For the first down. McCardo goes up. He is hit in the air by Greg Myers. He hangs on. He comes down at the 15 yard line. They needed nine and he gets 10. Great this, play. This is beautifully executed. He's in the slot. Everyone recognizes the blitz. He knows he's going to get hammered. Concentrates on the football. Fifth catch of the day for McCardo. A big third down conversion. First down, 15 yard line. Converting on third down and nine. Here's Means to the 10 yard line. Second down and five. Double T with a tackle for Cincinnati. A big punt return giving life to Jacksonville here. Again, a nice little cutback by Means. Starts outside and shoots inside. And the next guy misses the tackle, and then the defensive back has to take on Natron Means. Again, now Jacksonville in that spot where they've been several times, but all they've been able to come up with is field goals. And you saw half. Bruce Costlin as he's starting to slip away. Here's Means, a little stutter step. Then the power move to about the seven yard line, where it'll be third down. Vincent Buckner with the tackle. How's it pacing the sideline? And uh, Cincinnati taking out big people and putting in defensive backs third and short. Let's see if the match works. Three wides for Jacksonville. It's third down. Just we two have for seven for Jacksonville. Ten minutes to go in the ball game. Cincinnati showing blitz again, and here it comes. Run blitz. Stewart is stopped. It'll be fourth down. And Mark Brunell motioning to the sideline. Let's go for it. But they send the kicker in again. Jacksonville has been inside the 20 several times today. They have had to settle for three points on most occasions. Mike Hollis will attempt a field goal of 25 yards. He's hit three from 21, 35, and 29. Oh. 
to narrow the margin to five. And he does. As he hits from 25 yards. Jacksonville now has 26 points. Cincinnati has 31. And we've got just over nine minutes left. So on the sideline strain growing that injury coming in the first half. James Hunden and Eric Bieniemy are the deep backs. Mike Hollis will be kicking off. Nine minutes and 12 seconds left in the ball game. Cincinnati leading now by five. They once led by 21. Hunden with the return near the 30-yard line. Let's go to New York for an update. Uh, Greg, we appreciate you hurrying through that. <laughs> and Boomer's got him right to the line. Oh, yeah, he's, he doesn't waste any time. He starts at 29 yard. I think there's no pushing and shoving at the end of the kickoff return. No flags. This pass is complete to Dillon. Out to the 35 yard line. Charlie, Eddie Robinson with the tackle. Excuse me, Charlie, if you're Cincinnati, you go right back to the first page of the uh, game plan this week. What you did in the early stages, it worked. Be very conservative here. You want time off the clock. You lead by five, 835. You've got to keep moving the chains, getting the first downs. And uh, actually, Boomer is a perfect quarterback for that situation. Very calming in the huddle. Second down four. Oh, oh. Lag is down. Uh, Corey Dillon almost lost the ball on the exchange for Boomer of size. Seth Payne with the tackle. Tom Coffin lobbying for a holding penalty. Maybe wishing and hoping. The young and the restless. Huh? The soap operas on the sidelines yes, continue. But it looks like yeah. maybe against the defense. Illegal hands. Hands of the face. Defense number 99. Five yard penalty. First down. Against Jacksonville. Joe Sminji. How do you pronounce his name? Schmengi. Thank you. Schmengi. I worked on that all morning long and never did get it right. Now this is called quite a bit now in the NFL when you get the hands. There's 99 right here up into the face mask. There's a lot of that. Now you see that right hand. Oh, that, that's not on the uh, face mask much at all. Meanwhile, here we go again. Game Hunter. Someone's going to have to talk to Boomer about the length of replays. As far as I'm concerned, he can mess up updates and commercials, but replays don't mess with. That's my area. Slow down. Well, I might suggest that uh, that we just take the second half of the replays. <laughs> yes, maybe. Now look, They're not trying to get it all in. Yeah. Taking his time in the huddle, using as much as he possibly can. This is a screen. This is to mill the fullback. Sips one tackle. Next two men get him. 725 and counting. Clyde Simmons leads the defense for the Jaguars. And there's also Travis Davis, 45 in there, did an excellent job of diagnosing the screen and giving uh, Mill the fullback no place to go. Clyde Simmons cleans up. Great play by Davis. He read it perfectly. Second down 15, 48 yard line of Cincinnati. Moving on the seven minute mark time remaining. Boomer steps forward, buys a little time, pass is complete to Corey Dillon. That was second down and 15. He's still about five or six yards shy of the first down. Eddie Robinson with the tackle. This is as much as I've seen Corey Dillon catch the ball for the Cincinnati Bengals when he came out of uh, Washington. Uh, just a rookie, you know, all he did out there was carry the ball. And the Bengals have had to spend a lot of time getting him used to the passing aspects of the NFL. That's his fifth catch of the day. One of those defining plays of the ball game is third down and six. Boomer avoids the rush, turns, passes complete to Mill, and he has stopped well shy of the first down. Great tackle, Dion figures. So it'll be fourth down, about three yards to go, and that means that Lee Johnson will come in to kick. And you see Jacksonville the, will have the ball. You saw the concern there on Bruce Coslett's uh, face. I, I think his sense is our defense can't stop Jacksonville. Therefore, we needed to score there. We're now in jeopardy. Leading by five. Reggie Barlow is the return man. This is a high one. This is a good kick. Fair catch is called for. And it is caught. 
There'll be a flag and a penalty on the play. It's caught by one of the Cincinnati players. That was Corey Sawyer. That's going to be interference with the ability to catch a fa catch the a ball. Fair catch ball. That's right. It's, it's fair catch interference will be the call, and they'll tag it on, and Jacksonville will have a little bit better field position. Interference with the opportunity to make a fair catch on a kicking team. 15-yard penalty. First down. A major hit of 15 yards. And you saw Bruce Cosler just look at Corey Sawyer and said, what were you thinking of? Oh. When it's past the kicker and it's down by the four or five yard line, it's a good idea. But out in the field of play, this is not a good idea. The Jaguars. Natron means on the right side. From the 39 out to the 45 yard line, that is six yards. Charlie is, down and four. as Jacksonville takes over here scored on six of seven trips inside the 20 yard line today but four field goals that has been the story of the game Bengals stopped them once and then returned uh, that all the way for a touchdown on the ensuing drive the Jaguars have moved the ball they knocked with the ball in the end zone here's means again Couple more yards off the right side. Tumulty with the tackle. Going back to that very costly penalty against Cincinnati on the fair catch interference, it was a 15 yard punt. So that means that in reality, Jacksonville would have had the ball or started this drive with their own 24 yard line, but it was a 15 yard penalty. <laughs> so 0 0. 0 0. Great right. field position for Jacksonville. Third down and one. It is incomplete. No, he said he caught it on the sideline. He has the catch on the sideline. It's McCardell with Ashley Ambrose right there. Boy, this is another Ooh, great a, catch. Oh, McCardell is having a banner evening. Doesn't catch it cleanly. Ambrose right there. Gets control. Is down. Excellent call by the officials. No question it's a catch. Fights First it down, all Jacksville. Yeah. Cincinnati 48 yard line. That was converting on third down and one. One third down conversion on the drive. Going for it all into double coverage. There's some bumping and it is incidental and incomplete. Jimmy Smith, the attended receiver, Sam Shade knocks it away. Yeah, well, I guess Cincinnati's caught on. Jacksonville is going to try to get uh, Smith and McCardell down the middle. Tito Paul in coverage, but there is a free safety, a center fielder. And the center fielder knocks the ball away. Even though Smith makes a valiant effort to make the catch, Sam Shade gets the ball on the ground. Second down and 10. 3.42 left. This pass is complete, but it will be a yard shy of the first down 39 yard line. McCardell again. Ambrose dropped him immediately. Third down and one. Tom Coughlin's got to be tired at the end of the day, you know. <laughs> He's expended much as much energy on the sideline as any player out there, and I think they're going to measure Charlie just to find out how close it is. That'll stop the clock, 3.28. Both ball clubs with three timeouts remaining. Uh, Coughlin knows too at eight and three the fact that Pittsburgh has already lost. They can take over first place in the AFC Central. Jacksonville also five and one in the division coming into the ball game. Next week they'll host Baltimore. Pittsburgh's at Arizona. And Cincinnati's at Philadelphia. Another one of those downs. There's been a bunch of them in this game, hasn't there? Yeah. It's been a, a, a series of defining downs. Yes. I don't think this is so defining here. You're in four down territory. Sure you are. So maybe you just give it to Means and ram it up in there. Yep. That's a call. He drops the ball. Flags are down. Cincinnati recovers, but there are two markers on the play. 
Tito Paul with the recovery. If it stands up. for the Bengals, but Taglia got one earlier and a kickoff return. So Cincinnati has the ball, needing to run three minutes and four seconds off of the clock. The NFL on NBC. Is in action again, the pitch to, to Dillon up the right side. And he stays in bounds. Clock is moving. Travis Davis with the tackle. Let's go back to the fumble. Watch uh, Brinson Buckner just as uh, Natron Means gets by me, gets up underneath the guard. Now watch his right arm. Pops that thing loose. Lays right there for Tito Paul, number 27. Third turnover of the day by Jacksonville. None for Cincinnati. Jacksonville came into this game plus 12 in turnovers. One of the best in the league, and that's one of the big reasons for their success but three today has cost them dearly and Jacksonville has taken a timeout they stop the clock we have two minutes and 50 seconds that is the time remaining in the ball game Cincinnati is up by five an interesting number is the average point differential in this series is five point eight points and, and it's five points right now uh, is there a point eight play in the NFL have you ever seen a point eight play a part of a safety. A part of a safety. <laughs> just to keep the averages going. Cincinnati led by 21 with 2.14 to go in the second quarter. But since then, uh, Jacksonville has closed it and closed it and closed it. And Cincinnati leading by five, trying to hold them off. Dylan, 24 carries, 85 yards rushing, and a touchdown. And he'll get another one. This time you can add about three more yards to his total. Ronaldo win, rookie out of Notre Dame. But the manner in which the uh, Jacksonville offense has been uh, eating up the uh, Cincinnati defense, uh, Cincinnati needs a first down here to be totally out of jeopardy. Jacksonville takes their second time out. They have one remaining. London just passed the marker for the first down. Charlie, great call by Cincinnati. First time they've used the formation. The only time today that the backfield has been empty and you could see where Jacksonville was late deploying. Now Boomer Esiason now standing right next to the uh, referee. He wants to know do we have to run a play before the two minute warning. Let's see 16 15 and that is the play clock 14. No play clock is a is a step off of the game clock. They can take it down to the two minutes. Eight. Yep it'll work. It should work. And it's going to. <laughs> two minutes, yes, two minutes. I counted it down. I worked it over. I'm right. <laughs> two minutes to go. You don't want to miss the end of this one. Boomer, with that countdown, Bob, put the pressure on Jacksonville. Absolutely. Do you use their last time out? They decided to save it. It cost them. 10 or 12 seconds on the clock. They come back after the two minute break. Dylan carries. Boyer with the tackle. And I see what the two minute warning allows you is an extra timeout. So they have to use that timeout now defensively. Now, any first down by Cincinnati, game over. They need eight yards, game over, because Jacksonville no longer has timeouts. So Boomer, sensing what's going on there, had the presence to use it. Use his knowledge. I'm not sure Jeff Blake could do that for you. Now is time for the Miller time game summary. 31 26 to score. Brunel 19 of 32. The interception. Three turnovers today by Jacksonville. The shocking 21 first quarter points today matches the Bengals' entire season total in the first quarter. Second down and nine. Minute 54 left. Jacksonville out of timeouts. Uh, there's unless they get a first down and Jacksonville still has a chance but with no timeouts they got to be uh, reaching for the ball uh, hope to get uh, Cincinnati in a punt situation go after it so there's still a breath of life left for Jacksonville but not much 
Young, the fullback, and he gets the call. First man through, and he has five yards to the 45 yard line. Logman with the tackle. And now, for the first time in the ballgame, as Sison is going to slow down his pace. Yes. Everything has been quick, hurry, first sound, go. As you know, we've had to uh, come back quickly out of commercials and promotional items and replays just to make sure that we didn't miss any of the live action. Antron Means with the fumble got the ball back in the hands of Cincinnati. Mm -hmm. uh, four field goals as opposed to touchdowns inside the 20. Certainly hurt Jacksonville. The three turnovers. Six seconds on the play clock. That's on the left of your screen. Milne again. Not quite close to the first down. He may have it. Logman with the stop. If he has it, that'll be enough. I think Tom uh, Coughlin just turned away thinking they got enough. They stopped the clock for a measurement. All right. Let's project. It's fourth down. Cincinnati. Do you punt the ball away? No, no. no. You don't? What do you do? No, no, no. You hand it to Milne. He's done so well. Yeah, I think uh, I think I'd take a chance with a punt. You, you go with the percentage, give him a first and 85 or 90 if it, this is a fourth down. If it's a first down, game is over. Game is over. Now, Boomer's going to back to help with the chains. That close. Now Bruce has caught, caught Boomer over yeah, to the to the sideline. Yeah. Fourth down, just a couple of inches. Quarterback sneak. Well, the clock is going to start here. I think Boomer goes out there and he lets the clock run down. As soon as they reach spot to change, they're going to let the clock run down. Take a timeout, punt the ball away. Countdown starts. Now they can take 25 seconds. That'll be the countdown. They don't mind the penalty here. Cincinnati still has three timeouts sure. remaining. Sure. Penalty means nothing. Take the penalty. I think you'll go with the quarterback sneak. Taking the countdown, barking. Everybody sitting. You were right. Once again, now it's on the punt team. Al Roberts, the special teams coach, generally there is special blocking for a punt rush. Uh, the last time there was a snap, it was a pretty shaky snap. It was high. The bingo snapper is Greg Truitt. He's normally very, very good. There's all of their snapping. Yep, they'll take any yardage whatsoever. Makes no difference how many yards. All they want to do is get the punt off. Barlow the return man. Good snap, punt is clear. Barlow takes a fair catch. That stops the clock with a fair catch. Doesn't waste any time on a return. So then I have 22 seconds left. No timeouts. Brunel has completed 19 of 32 for 269 yards. He has completed five passes for 20 or more yards. And they need a touchdown. First and 90. Is it impossible? Is it impossible? No, it's not impossible. Is it? Well, that's a song. Is no, you're right. But people fall down. People trip. Strange things can happen. Sure. In the last 22 seconds of a ball game. Keep it up there. Hope for the best. Four wide receivers going to the sideline. It is caught out of bounds, stops the clock, 15 seconds. That took seven seconds. So you have 15 seconds left. You've got a first down. Yeah, I, I think what you what, need what, another one in a Hail Mary. Yeah, Jacksonville's trying to get to the 50 so then they can throw it to the end zone. Yeah. I mean, you got to get in a spot where you can get it in the end zone. That's their only hope a defensive penalty or a spectacular play somewhere on not this play, the next play. Again, four wide receivers, three on the near side. 
Grambling he forward. Can't run. He's got to get to the sideline. If he doesn't, the clock will move game down over. in bounds, and the game is over. Brunel's gamble cut down by Corey Sawyer. Sawyer kept him from going out of bounds, and the Bengals upset the Jaguars. What a ball game. Mark Brunel is a very smart quarterback. There is nothing he could have done worse in that situation. Run the ball. Made two mistakes in the ball game. The interception cost him points and that play. That's the worst thing he could have done. But give all of the kudos to Boomer Esiason. The uplift, the emotional uplift to the fans. The way that he moved the ball club and everything was so quick and so crisp. Yeah, and also the manner in which he handled the latter stages of this football game was beautiful. And and that's the the, the coaching that Boomer has received from Sam White. Certainly give him credit. Bruce Coslett, Ken Anderson, and just his experience on the field. Had a grasp of everything that was there, understood the entire thing, executed it beautifully. Jacksonville will remain tied atop the AFC Central with Pittsburgh.